Second Kings chapter 21 today. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, Hezekiah has died. And in verse 21, it said, or verse 1 of chapter 21, Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother's name was Hephzibah. And this man, Hezekiah's son, who was born three years after Hezekiah's illness, will be one of the worst rulers, the worst ruler, ruler that Judah ever had. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. And no excuses for Manasseh at all. There's never any excuse. But this man had a godly father for the first 12 years of his life, who no doubt told him all about God and God's goodness. He just didn't care, didn't sink in. He rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made an Asherah pole, as Ahab king of Israel had done. He bowed down to all the starry host and worshipped them. Manasseh was into everything that was bad. He undid all the good his father did. He was like he was like his evil grandfather instead of his good father. For he built altars in the temple of the Lord, in which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And so he built altars for other gods in the holy temple that was built for the Lord, designed by the Lord even. And that is just almost beyond words. That is such an abomination to God. And notice what he worshipped, verse 5. In both courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to all the starry host. Well, he was into astrology. He worshipped the sun god, the moon god, the gods of the stars. They were all being worshipped in God's house. You know, that's like someone moving into your house and doing things that you hate, knowing that you hate it, and thinking, well, that's just fine. I'm going to do it anyway. I wonder how long they would be in your home before you threw them out into the snowbank. Six. He sacrificed his own son in the fire, practiced sorcery and divination, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger. God hates the occult and don't let anyone ever tell you anything different. And as if doing it wasn't bad enough, he did it in the temple of the Lord. And with that, and the offering of his own child, which is just unspeakable, he was pushed, He just pushed God way over the edge. Verse 7. He took the carved Asherah pole he had made and put it in the temple of which the Lord had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. The Ten Commandments were very clear. God warned against worshipping images. Well, as if to say, God, take your commands and get out. They worshipped their images in God's holy temple. 8. God says, I will not, God said to Israel, he had promised them, he said, I will not again make the feet of the Israelites wander from the land I gave their forefathers, if only they will be careful to do everything I commanded them and will keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them. God gave his people, Israel, that land. And his plan was that they would live there forever and be happy. And all they had to do was obey him. And he would make it all work out. But they blew it of their own free will. But the people did not listen. Verse 9 says, Manasseh led them astray so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. Manasseh was evil. And he influenced the people the wrong way. But they are accountable for their own sins because they didn't have to follow him. 10. The Lord said through his servants, the prophets, Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these detestable sins. He has done more evil 
than the Amorites who preceded him and has led Judah into sin with his idols. See, it's not as if Manasseh and the people were ignorant. They had plenty of knowledge. They just did not care. 12. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I'm going to bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. Israel's sins were the worst imaginable. So their punishment will be horrible beyond imagination as well. It's going to be so bad that the people in the nations who hear about it, they won't be able to believe it. Their ears will tingle, says God. It, it, they will be the talk of the nations. 13. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the measuring line used against Samaria and the plumb line used against the house of Ahab. I will wipe out Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And so like you wash all the crud off your dishes and set them in the rack to dry, God says He's going to wipe the sinful human crud off of His holy land. He's going to get rid of that garbage. 14. God says, I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and hand them over to their enemies. They will be looted and plundered by all their foes. And so God will not only not help his people like he did in the past when they obeyed him God will actually help their enemies to win a complete reversal by God because of a complete reversal in the lives of these Israelites 15 because they have done evil in my eyes and have provoked me to anger from the day their forefathers came out of Egypt unto this day see this wasn't anything new for centuries God tried forgiveness, he tried patience, he tried being nice, but they never changed, not really. Oh, there were times when they came back to the Lord for brief periods of times because, because of the judgment that God sent to bring them back, but they never really completely surrendered to God. So now God is sick of it, and he's sick of them, and they will experience his full-blown wrath. 16. Moreover, Manasseh also shed so much innocent blood that he filled Jerusalem from end to end besides the sin that he had caused Judah to commit so that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Jerusalem was filled with dead bodies of innocent people whom Manasseh murdered. Just slaughtered his own people. That, on top of his idolatry, is all the reason God needs to punish him. 17. As for the other events of Manasseh's reign, and all he did, including the sin he committed, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Manasseh rested with his fathers and was buried in his palace garden, the garden of Uzzah. And Amnon, or Ammon, his son, succeeded him as king. You read what is written here in this one half a chapter about Manasseh, and you probably think, well, that man was horrible. He was bad. Look at the things he did. And that's true. But imagine, God only wrote just a sample of the bad that he did. He did much more. 19. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. His mother's name was Mahuthameth, daughter of Haruz. She was from Jotbah. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as his father Manasseh had done. And so we see from this that his father, Ammon's father, set the stage for his son's sinful life. He set a sinful example. And they did astrology together. They did witchcraft together. And the rest of that sinful garbage, which the Lord says is evil, which the Lord says is abomination to him. 22. It says he forsook the Lord, the God of his fathers, and did not walk in the way of the Lord. This father and son team didn't even make an attempt to worship God in even a superficial way. They just turned their backs on God completely and refused to listen to his instructions at all. 23. Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated the king in his palace. Then the people of the land killed all who had plotted against King Ammon 
and they made Josiah his son king in his place. And so the king's aides, Ammon's aides, killed him. And then a group of civilians killed the aides. Verse 25. As for the other events of Ammon's reign, and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? He was buried in his grave in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah his son succeeded him as king. And somehow, by the grace of God, Josiah will be a good king, a very good king, in fact. But it's going to be too late for the nation. He himself will be blessed, but it will be too late. God was pushed beyond the point of no return with the horrible sins of uh, Manasseh and his son. And we'll pick up our study in chapter 22 next.